Hello, everybody. How are you doing tonight? I'm really excited to be here with you guys for yet another farm meeting. Um, just getting everything underway. See a lot of folks are joining already. This is awesome. Thank you, guys. You know, I got to admit, I like I had this on my calendar, but like almost forgot that it happened because today is the official first uh, Wednesday of the month. And uh, so I'm really excited to be here with you guys as as usual. Um, you know, this is going to be one of those situations where it's ask all your questions. I'm going to try to get you as many answers as I can. As always, I want to say thank you to my mods. Like I see um, Jack from the Mindful Homesteads here. I see a couple other folks are joining in. Thank you guys for, for joining. By the way, if, if you can, please, by all means, support our mods, the Mindful Homestead, uh, North Star Prep Stetter, um, uh, Wholesome Roots, like any of those folks who, who come in in here and help. Uh, it really makes a huge difference for us because I know sometimes the questions can come fast and furious. Let me answer the first question. And I actually see that uh, Russell asked it. And so let me get it right out of the gate because I know a lot of folks are wondering this one. So I really was saying that, you know, by the end of August, the cows would be here. And it is by my watch officially the end of August. And uh, lo and behold, the cows are not here yet. Um, and and uh, really, it's uh, complicated is, is kind of the answer. So I am currently waiting on the cows, waiting to resolve some things and kind of closing the transaction. Um, like I've said in previous videos, we, we have a, a herd of a small herd of um, uh, Scottish Highland cattle that are, are sort of in the works for us. They should be coming. I've been doing all my preps and getting ready. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping they come soon, but uh, yeah, they have not gotten here yet. I don't know what else to say other than that. Um, I'm disappointed. I was really hoping, you know, my plan had been that um, I was actually hoping that, you know, I, I had I knew I had this business trip that I had to go down to, to the Bahamas for for uh, a couple of weeks. Um, and my plan had been that I would come back and be able to have them here ready to go. But uh, unfortunately, that's not been the case. Sometimes things don't quite work out the way you hope for. I still think that they are coming. Uh, but yeah, that's the case. Unlike, say, as Elite Jam brings up the Tigers. <laughs> you know, I don't know if everybody knows this story, so I'm going to rehash it for, for some folks. So sorry if, if it's a rerun for folks. Um, back on April 1st of 2020, back, remember back in the day when like uh, the Tiger King was huge and, and super, super popular? Um, well, <laughs> when that was going on, I decided to make an April Fool's prank talking about the idea that I wanted to get livestock guardian tigers for the farm. And I made a video and I think a lot of people got the joke and said, ha ha, funny April Fool's. But I think there were a lot of people who actually really thought I was serious about getting tigers. And um, to this day, I still get questions about it. And uh, I think most people are just giving me a hard time. But I know there are some people who seriously thought that I was getting tigers, but I will not get tigers on the farm ever. 100% guaranteed. Um, I am seeing Lori Sewell ask if uh, I plan on getting penguins. I don't plan on getting penguins. While I did flirt with the idea of um, getting some flamingos, uh, particularly while I was spending a lot of uh, time down with those flamingos in, in the Bahamas, uh, I don't have any plans on getting them. I, I really did a lot more research and talked to a couple of folks, and it would be really hard for me to take good care of um, flamingos in our climate. So, so no, that's, that's definitely not the case. <laughs> um, other questions I'm seeing here tonight. Uh, Castle is asking, um, do I plan on, uh, or actually, I'm sorry, how are the barn cats doing? Well, and the barn cats are doing really well. So on our farm now, we have four cats, which is crazy. I'd never thought I would be a four cat household, but, but here we are. Um, and, uh, let's see, how are they doing? They, the sort of one barn cat that everybody can see, you can see little barn cat right in her perch on the window. Um, she's doing great. She is, yes, my forever indoor cat ever since she got injured last year. Um, Pablo Barn Cat is our original barn cat. He's doing good. <clears throat> he is adjusting to our new barn cats. So um, Molly and Ginny Barn Cat, the two new barn cats who arrived on the farm, they're a mother and daughter pair. Um, he's doing pretty well. He and Molly have gotten into a couple of tiffs. My bottom message aren't popping. I don't quite know what that means. 
Um, <laughs> um, he, he and Molly, Pablo and Molly have gotten into a couple of tiffs, but they are starting to uh, get um, used to each other. And, and they are starting to look like they might be friends. Uh, Jenny Barncat is still super skittish, but she's been my favorite to watch. If you guys actually want to see something funny, you should go on our TikTok. Um, and I know not everybody uses TikTok, and I know for some YouTuber fans, uh, YouTube fans, it's like not a fun thing. Like nobody wants to talk about um, using TikTok. But uh, I do have plans to um, do more of these videos, like I did on TikTok. But I did a, a day of of Jenny Barncat where I strapped a little tiny camera, so I have these. Um, tiny and they're very very cool i have these tiny um insta 360 cameras and i was able to like mount it on Ginny Barncat, and she was able to run around with it around and, and the footage i got was great i actually also just did a video where i did that with a runner duck too hey rose from wholesome roots how are you tonight my friend um <clears throat> and uh yeah it was a it was a lot of fun making those videos so but it's been fun watching Ginny Barncat get used to the farm and get adjusted to things. So, um, yeah, that's how it's going. And, uh, to, to user men who asked me, how, how am I doing? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm actually doing really well. Hey, Kathy, how are you? Kathy at North star prep center. Um, and so, yeah, that's how I'm doing. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm enjoying hanging out with you guys tonight as, as always. So I, I really appreciate it. Um, so Licaruso asked me, have I thought about doing YouTube shorts? I've done a few YouTube shorts and every time I do it, people always get annoyed with me. So, um, I don't plan, I don't know. Maybe I'll start doing more of them sometime soon, but, um, yeah, I don't know. And Miss Antiflo, uh, gave me $5. So thank you for that super chat. I really appreciate it. And that goes kind of to the, uh, to the, feed fund basically is, is what it goes. Yeah. See, some people don't like shorts. I, it's very controversial. What I've kind of stuck with is I do my longer videos on YouTube and then my short videos on TikTok and actually more and more on Instagram with like Instagram reels. Um, we also do like reruns, if you will, um, like reruns end up on Facebook. So uh, you'll, you'll notice like a lot of our older videos pop up on your Facebook feed. Um, but it's been actually really good. Another group of people I can share our, our stories with. So yeah, I enjoy that. Thank you, Maya. Um, hey, Morgan, any tips on finding or purchasing a homestead? Yeah, there's a couple tips. I think number one, focus in on what part of the country you want to live on. So be able to answer that question. I think that that's an important one. If, if you're just so open to anywhere in the country, it's actually going to be hard because that, that creates so many different possible avenues that you could go down. Um, and uh, yeah, like I, I would actually say know where you want to live. Um, get to know the community that you want to buy property in too, because I think different communities are different. Like, you know, I love our town of Peachum here in Vermont. I think it's different than say like, uh, you know, we were actually looking at a farm in Sheffield, Vermont, which is you know kind of a different spot, even though it's you know, about 40 minutes from here. Uh, we were looking at another farm about two hours away in Addison County, totally different spot. And so I'm glad, you know, we worked out in finding a, a, a place that we liked. And so I would think about that as well. And I think the other thing is really think about why you want that homestead. Like what's your, your plan for that farm or homestead? Like, do you want to do it to raise food for just you and your family? Do you want to grow trees? Do you want to have livestock? What types of livestock, you know, really think about the different avenues that you might want to go for. And, and, and like, you know, have that sense because that's going to help to figure out which, um, which properties are better for you. And then I think maybe the, the last thing I would say is you probably never need as much land as you think you do. So, um, you know, like I know we bought way too much land, relatively speaking, I'm glad we have it, but like of the 160 ish acres we have here on this farm, um, you know, we, we use, uh, about three of the acres very heavily. We use about eight of those acres, like beyond those three, um, pretty regularly. And then the other stuff gets used less and less the further out you go. So, um, you know, I think that that's, uh, sort of the, the, the challenge. So those are some thoughts on, on, uh, if you're out there shopping for farms, why did I choose Vermont? Why not the West coast, et cetera. So, so I was born in new England. Um, I, uh, grew up in Connecticut. I went to uh, college in Boston. I lived in Connecticut a lot of my life. 
Um, and I've always really liked it up here in Vermont. It's a little bit more rural than, than other parts of New England. But I'm, I, I feel like I very much consider myself a New Englander. And, and so, you know, I, I lived like as far south as Washington, D.C. And it like, felt like I was living in a foreign country and just wasn't home to me. Um, and so, yeah, I, I didn't have any intention of ever moving west because like I would, I've, you know, I've spent time in the West Coast, but I would never really want to live there for a prolonged period of time. Just, just not my style, you know, different strokes for different folks. <clears throat> Hi, Morgan. Just finished watching all your videos here on YouTube. Love seeing the farm grow over the time. Can't wait for more future. Well, thank you, Sam's Life with a Husky. I really appreciate that super chat and, and the, those kind words. Okay. Fifi Noir asks, had any more problems with the Midnight Hunters and trespassing? So, so the answer there is no. Um, we haven't had any problems with them since that night that I made the video about. Um, I'm actually going to put out a video tomorrow, all of that's sort of an update on what happened. And one thing I will say is, and I'll give you guys actually the sneak preview of it. Um, I'm starting a petition actually to, to get some of the uh, hunting laws changed here in Vermont. If you guys wanted to do me a huge solid kind of showing support for this petition, and I'll drop the link for it down in the chat. Um, you know, it really is. It's it's about kind of putting a ban on, uh, on hound hunting, which as I've gone down the research and rabbit hole, is really just kind of awful. And and so, um, yeah, if you if you're if that's something that that sits well with you, go ahead and sign it. I'd really appreciate the support. If you don't, you disagree, and you think I'm off my rocker for being against hound hunting, that's fair too. I mean, this is one of those things. I feel like a lot of times somebody might have a point of view that's different than your own, and uh, you know, generally speaking, that's okay. And, and I think, you know, I can advocate one thing and you can advocate the other and we can still be friends. I, you know, so, so don't feel like just because I believe something different than you that we need to go to war. Um, I actually think that that's like one of those fundamental issues in our country that like things would be better if we all could actually recognize that you can have a different point of view as somebody and still try to find some common ground. Um, but if you are into thinking about restrictions on, on hound hunting, I, I really would appreciate the support. Thank you, Jess. Jesse, I, I really appreciate that uh, super chat. So thank you. And we, oh, we got another one from Barry West, my friend Barry. What plans are you going to do to correct the egg fertility? Less feed, more pasture, larger pools, trim feathers, more incubator humidity? Um, this is a really good question, uh, Barry. Um, and, uh, you know, let me let me try to hit that because I think uh, the, that's some actually really good stuff that you're asking there. So I think the biggest thing is... Um, Focus on my humidity. I'm actually getting like a humid humidity modifier dealy, and uh, you know, like you like that's gonna I think help there. Um, I'm also actually trying to find more pools for water and potentially larger ones to help with the mating. But I actually don't think it's the fertility it's itself. It's the incubation that I've been having the problems with it. So so like my fertility rate hasn't been bad. My hatching rate has been bad. Um, and, and so I think it's, it's going to be much more about that as well as storage of eggs. I'm going to store them for a shorter period of time. Um, and, and so I think that those are some of the things that I'll do to change things. Um, Hey, I saw a comment from Jack. Oh, where'd it go? So, so my buddy Jack at the mindful homestead made just a great point here in the comments. And I want to call it out if I can find it without getting lost in the sea of comments. Um, but, but anyway, Jack's point was essentially that he and I butt heads all the time and we're friends. And that's a hundred percent true. Like he believes different things that I do. I don't know. Maybe he's pro hound hunting. I I'm okay with that. I, I think that that's a big thing. Like you've got to be actually comfortable with having friends who have a different point of view than yours. I, I think that that's, it's actually something that's really important. Oh, thank you for that super chat there, Ashley. Hold on. Let me get to your question. If I can see if I can pin it and highlight it. Um, <clears throat> Ashley Ranger is asking, are you planning on selling dairy products after you get cows? If so, are you able to sell raw milk in Vermont? Um, well, let's see. So I think number one, I don't plan on doing dairy right now. The reason we're going to get the cows is um, we're going to be doing them for meat. Uh, the long, long-term plan is actually to start a beef jerky company. Um, and, and so so that will be what we do. I do believe you can sell raw milk. It's just, I've got a lot of friends who are dairy farmers and I see the life they have to lead. And uh, yeah, dairy farming just ain't for me, at least at this stage of the game. But uh, thank you for the this, this super chat there, Ashley. Ranger Rob, Country Living. Have you ever thought about raising game birds, pheasants, and more? Yeah, a little bit. I, I think it's a little bit uh, sort of off my core mission. 
Um, not to say that it wouldn't be a bad thing stocking the the land around here with those types of birds. I go turkey hunting. I go deer hunting around here. Um, but uh, yeah, like, I don't know, pheasants, it could be fun, but I just, I got a lot of other things to do is really what it comes down to. I think you'll find that half the things that folks are interested in, if I'm ever going to do, the reason I'm usually not doing it is I just don't have the time and I'm trying to focus. And uh, I think that that's one of the biggest lessons I've found um, when it comes to, to farming and, and having a farm or a homestead is, is that like, you have to really manage your time well, and you have to really think about where you want to put your time and energy and, and let, let that guide your actions. I think hound hunting is fine as long as they're supervised constantly. Letting them roam freely isn't acceptable. So thank you for the super chat, uh, Paraplaneta Missionary. Um, I, you know, I actually, actually, I very much see your point of view here. So um, I, number one, I think a big part of why I'm actually pushing for this, this hound hunting ban, or at least a, a change in hound hunting regulations, it, it gets down to the fact that like the technology out there today when it comes to these gps collars and you can be like a couple miles away from your dog like that to me isn't controlling your dog that to me isn't sport and 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 that to me is where i actually think you find a lot of disruption a lot of the problems and and so um that idea of being supervised constantly is not what's happening um and and here in vermont you know you've got raccoon hunting which can happen at night which is a whole nother ish set of issues and, and so so i i think it's it's the the challenging way that the hound hunting happens that that's the biggest issue i have yeah see victoria is saying something similar um yeah no it's true hunter i i'm like i said i'm actually very pro hunting i hunt myself um so and yeah so oh thank you i really appreciate that i'd love to see your drawing of of pablo um and toby that would be a lot of fun to see that um, you can send it to Goldshaw Farm, P.O. Box 225, Peachum, Vermont, 05862. Uh, I'm actually, my goal is actually to get um, Scottish Highland is, is the breed of cattle. Hey, it's Chrissy at the Paragon Ridge Ranch. Um, good evening. Thank you. I really appreciate that, Chrissy. That's very kind of you. And I hope you are having a great day. Okay, we want to hear a puppy update. I'm hearing puppy update, puppy update, puppy update. All right. So I am still looking for a breeder is the puppy update. So there's no puppy coming in the works yet. I still want to get a puppy. I still am going to get a puppy. I'm just waiting to find the right breeder. I have not been able to make a match. And oh, thank you, Victoria, for that uh, super chat. And yeah, so um, yeah, that's the case. Have I tried vegan meats? Yeah, I've actually tried, I think, most of the vegan meats. Um, you know, I, I think... Uh, you know, do I love them? No. I mean, I, I'm actually somebody, even though I eat meat and I, I, I raise meat for other people to eat, um, I am very open to like a plant-based lifestyle. I think it's actually good. I think we as a society probably eat too much meat. And so to have more vegetarian meals or have more plant-based meals is not a bad thing. Um, I think the Impossible Burger and the Beyond Meat Burgers, they're all right. I actually prefer like a good black bean burger where it's not like pretending to be something it's not. Um, that's that's my personal preference. Thank you, Rusty Brazenfire. Since you were looking at them, have I considered peacocks? Yeah, I've thought about it. No decisions just yet, but um, uh, I, I have thought about it for sure. Um, how is my, Molly and Jenny? They are doing really good. Like I said, and if you actually want to see some action of them in action, check out TikTok. Uh, there's been a couple videos up there lately that have had that. Um, and you'll see them in tomorrow's video. I'm not going to give it away, but you do definitely see an update on Molly and Jenny in tomorrow's video. What's been the best accomplishments moving to the farm? <sighs> That's a great question. Um, I think my best accomplishment since moving to the farm has been the the... I don't know. I guess the, the improvements I've seen in myself, and I know that's probably sounds a little selfish, but like, I feel like I, I have become a more patient, more thoughtful person since moving to the farm. I think I've, I've come more open-minded since moving to the farm. And, and a lot of that's come from what I've done and some of my experiences and what I've learned. And, and, and so, so I, I guess that's what I would call out as, as my best accomplishments. Um, 
I know it's oftentimes it's, it's the outward things that people look for, but my answer would actually be on the inward side. I think I've made improvement in myself and, and I think that's, that's been very positive from, from life on the farm. Oh, thank you again for that. Super chat. Sam's life of the Husky hounding hunting. Okay. But if dog don't listen to commands, dog have no business being out hunting uncontrolled can be dangerous. Yes. I, I agree with that. Uncontrolled can be very dangerous. I feel strongly. Hey, Christina, how are you? Good to see you. Hope your dissertation, I believe. Uh, <laughs> I feel you're strongly missing an opportunity to include blind melon and beekeeping videos. Okay, Christina, just for you, I'm, I'm going no rain here very soon in the next bee video. <laughs> I hope you have a great day there, Christina. Um, was it something I said to my super chat get missed? Oh, David, I am so sorry. Um, do you mind just repeating your question and I will try to catch it? in the, the stream here. I, I did not mean to miss it. I apologize. Um, well, I'm going back and looking, David, hang on. And I'm sorry about that. Whoa, it's going so quick. Oh, grew up in Avon, learned how to play baseball in Manchester, dreamed to have a, what gave you the, oh, dude. Okay. So David, I just found your question. Sorry. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's awesome that you grew up in Avon and, and, you know, learned to play baseball in Manchester. I went to high school in Manchester. I grew up in Marlboro. Um, so yeah, central Connecticut. Man. Um, I think what gave me the courage, uh, was, was probably, uh, my, I, I have this great ability. Like one of my, I think positive and negative traits is, uh, a sense of, any sense of confidence. And so that, that confidence probably, um, is what motivated me to, to be able to make the jump, um, even if it was overconfident or wrongly placed confidence. Uh, so, yeah, if that, if that answers some things for you. Um, Tranquil Breeze, I don't think I, I will plan on selling the honey. I think that'll just be something we have here around our house, as well as maybe give to friends and family. Um, I have no intention of really doing bees at any sort of large scale. It's just more something I find is good for the environment around here and I enjoy doing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't have any intention of selling. Um, what's your best advice for farm for looking? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I kind of get, did this already, but know why think about your location. Think about the community you're moving to and think about what your goals are. Am I going to do any collabs during 2021 and 22? You know what, Darcia? I really hope so. You know, it, it's one of those things where I've been sort of holed away here on the farm. So I haven't done nearly as many like collaborations as I'd like to. Um, collaborations that I'd like to do. Let me just throw these out there and maybe they'll manifest themselves. Um, I've got some friends in Texas, a couple of different friends in Texas that I'd love to go down and visit and hang out with down there. Uh, as well as I have some friends down in the, I guess I'll just call it the Carolinas area, especially Western Carolinas. And uh, I'd love to go down and visit them and hang out. And so if I, if I was, if you're going to see me on the road doing collaborations, those would be probably the first two places that you're going to find me. Oh, thanks for stopping by Rose. Yeah. Honey makes mead. I might try to make my own mead. That's definitely something I, I would give a, uh, a shot at. Are you friendly with the folks at Snug Valley Farm in East Hardwick? Snug Valley Farm. I don't think I know them. Um, that's not, they're in East Hardwick. They're not too far from us though. Um, Josh Co. 79. Hello from Hartford. Took my kids to the local farm with free-grade chickens. No fencing protection other than large animals. Watched a bobcat slip through and grab a bird. Immediately thought of me. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad people are just thinking of me whenever they see bobcats. <laughs> but it's awesome, Josh. Um, I mean, not, not for the bird, but look, uh, you know, as much as I, I do for predator protection around my birds, I also recognize that, that those predators are, are animals too and they have a right to exist and they uh, need to eat too. Oh, by the way, um, here, before I get to Miss Okami's question, you know, it's actually okay if people put it all in caps. I don't see that as rude. It actually helps me see their question easier. So it's not shouting. It just, it makes it easier as I'm going through the chat to see them. Um, are you going to get turkey or quail? Thank you, Miss Okami, for that super chat. Um, also, if you get a pheasant, please check out golden pheasants. They are awesome. Yeah, so I, I might get turkey someday. I, I, I don't think I will ever get quail. Um I've seen what quail do and uh, I don't love like just the, what you have to do to raise them. I'd much rather raise a larger bird, like a chicken um, or a duck or a goose. Or, like I said, a turkey, I could see you. 
Um, are you going to be home after your trip? I miss being with your wife. Yeah, I'm going to be home for a while after my trip. I'm, I'm really happy to be back. Um, and I miss my wife very, very much. And I miss the animals very, very much. And I'm just really glad to be here. <sighs> the weird chickens are doing good, but I actually have a problem. So if anybody out there has a silky rooster, I'm going to put this out there. And if somebody shoots me a message on like social media or emails me at goldshopfarm at gmail.com um, or through our website, maybe we can connect. I'm looking for somebody in the relatively reasonable area who has a silky rooster that they'd like to trade with me. So my silky rooster, Penny, has fathered now, I'm going to give a spoiler here, but he's fathered six different chicks um, that we've had on our farm. And I want to keep and, and I want to keep all of those chicks, all the females at least. And so it means I have to move Penny out. And so he's a beautiful black silky rooster. He's awesome. You can see him in our videos. He's always the first one out the door. And so I want to trade him to somebody who has another silky rooster. And so if you're out there, let me know. And yeah, I know Tiffa Files is d disappointed that I'm going to try to trade Penny. I know it's like, it's like trading a favorite baseball player almost. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I actually uh, do want to try to trade Penny so that I can keep all the other birds and I don't have to worry about any inbreeding issues. Um, so if you're interested, let me know. Hey, Morgan, glad I finally caught you live. Put a deposit on Maremma. He'll be soon. Um, hope he's a lot like Toby. Congratulations, Mike. And, and Mike, I don't know where you're from, but if you want to shoot me an email, I'd be very curious to hear your experience with the breeder. Um, yeah, because I'd be up for it. Are any jobs available? Uh, no, but I actually, based on the last conversation at my last live, I'm actually working on making a hire as we speak. So stay tuned for that. So the plan is six cows, or actually technically two heifers, two cows, and two steers, but uh, six cattle. Um, the runner decks are doing better. Not shouting, just want to be seen. <laughs> It's totally cool, Luca. No need to apologize. Runner ducks are doing better. I'm, I'm out of the woods with their health worries. I was worried there for a while. I really struggled with this batch of ducks. I don't I don't know what it was. Um, but uh, the runner ducks are doing well. They are – actually, I just posted a TikTok this morning. I Sorry, I keep pointing to TikTok. But I just posted one this morning all about um, the runner ducks. And I did like a – I mounted a camera on a runner duck, and it was so much fun. You guys are going to love it if you get a chance to see that video. <laughs> Oh, by the way, just I'm going to repeat this one for folks. So I'm, I'm kicking off this petition officially tomorrow. But if you guys wouldn't mind participating in my hound hunting petition here in Vermont, I really would appreciate the support. Um, I'm dropping a link right in the chat. And uh, yeah, thanks, guys. The scaredy ducks. Yeah, the scaredy ducks are the runner ducks. They're one and the same. Bumblefoot duck is bumblefoot duck. I don't know. For some reason, that just makes me talk Scottish. Uh, bumblefoot Bumblefoot duck is doing really well. Um, she's improving. I think I'm going to actually be able to get away without having to do surgery. And thank you, Kathy, for posting those links. You are the link ninja by far. Um, and so I, I keep soaking her twice a day uh, with warm water and Epsom salts, uh, about 45 minutes to an hour each time. And uh, yeah, it seems like the swelling and the, the, the lump with the bumble is going down. And so I'm knock on wood, hoping she has to be able to survive without uh, surgery. Is it weird that I've never in had an interest in learning about farming until watching you early? And now I've watched most of your videos since it's a little bit weird, Jackson, but I still think it's a okay. So you're awesome. DM Herzer. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Cat Gaming asks, how many animals have been killed by predators? Ooh, I'd have to do a count here. Let me let me let me try to see if I can do this. And uh, yeah, it'll be some memories here. Um, so first five ducks, I had five ducks killed by the mink. Um, so uh, that's five. Um, then there's Margie the murder chicken who got killed by I think either a hawk or an owl. Um, and then there is um, Delilah Puddle Duck, who I think got grabbed by a bobcat. Um, I think that was it. That sounds low. But no, I'm pretty sure that, oh, yeah. I think those are the only ones that I can verify were predators. So so seven, seven animals have been killed on our farm over the last four years by predators. Is there a farmer forum chat you use for advice? 
Um, I belong to a lot of different Facebook groups. And so usually for the, the animal, um, that I'm interested in, I'm usually in that Facebook group for that one. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's really the best place I'd go. Um, also I'd, I'd suggest having an animal mentor. So like a real life human you can talk to and bounce ideas off of. Um, I think that's also a really useful thing. How many acres do you have? And would you like more? Um, so we have about 160 ish. It depends actually on how you count it, which is why I always say like 160 ish. Um, uh, so, so that's, that's, I guess the answer. Would I like more? I don't know. Maybe. Hey, it's Don at Little Mountain Life. How are you doing there, buddy? Um, good to see you. By the way, Don, I just you, you could tell your wife I am loving her TikTok. She's doing such a good job with those. So, so you guys are doing some great stuff. You know, Tranquil Breeze, I feel like I say this all the time where we should be doing a Discord, and I always mean to, but don't. But maybe I'll do it in the next couple of weeks. I'm I'm still trying, like, I'm still so oversubscribed with the things I gotta do versus the time I have, but but this would be one I'd love to try to get nailed down this summer or I'm sorry this winter Swiss cheese burn right now um hey Jen Paul how is Lenny is that his name that is his name so Lenny the goose I don't know if you guys all know Lenny the goose Lenny the goose is a new hatchling that hatched out this spring he is a buff goose meaning so he's like one of the offspring of Bruce the goose um he's like a nice light brown color but he's got a little bit of a problem. He's got like a weird leg walking thing. Like it's like, it's almost like his hips don't sit properly in the sockets of like the, the hip socket. And um, so he has trouble walking, but he's doing pretty well. So he's, he seems healthy ish. Um, I'm going to keep him around. I think kind of as a, uh, a mascot and uh, yeah, I um, yeah, that, that'll be my try. You know, you're a hundred percent right, Jack. Like club clubhouse was like, I was using it for a while too, a lot, but like, I don't know. I, I haven't been on there in a while. I get notifications every once in a while and almost feel guilty, but like I had fun for a bit, but then after a while, it just sort of feels like a conference calls for work. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think my animals or my skills are, uh, are, are all that useful, but thank you for the support there, Smoggy. Um, but yeah, I, I will be at, I won't be in any fairs, but I will be at the home centers of America conference, um, in October in, uh, um, that's what Virginia, uh, uh, front row of Virginia. And, uh, if you want to see me, I will be there. And if you guys come and find me at the home centers of America conference until I run out of them and I got a couple thousand, so it should take me a little while to run out of them. You can actually, I will give you one of these orange buttons. It's a special gold soft arm button. The last time I gave these out was actually at the last Homesteaders America conference. I just got a whole bunch of them printed. And so they're available. The other thing, and I'm going to make this just available to you guys here on the live stream, at least for right now. Um, I'm giving away free stickers to anybody who wants them. So um, I just had two new sets of stickers printed up. I had these uh, release the quacken stickers. Uh, you can see that. Yeah. And then I also have these Toby dog stickers. No, can you see that there? Okay. So, so both sets of these stickers, I have, I have a whole bunch of them and I'm willing to give them out to you guys for free just for hanging out tonight on the live stream. But if you want to get them, here's what you have to do. You have to send me a self-addressed stamped envelope. And so you send it to Goldshaw Farm, P.O. Box 225, Peachum, Vermont, 05862. Um, you'll find it. Actually, even if you look in the description of the video, you can see our mailing address there. Um, like, like scroll down even on this page and you'll see it. And uh, I will send you, if you send a self-addressed stamped envelope. So that means like you send me an envelope. Like, so you send an, you get the envelope that you're sending to me. Inside that envelope, put another envelope that has your return your mailing address written on it as like the, the send address and you put a stamp on it. If you do all of that, I will send you one of each, one of the Toby dog and one of the release the quacking stickers. So uh, send them on down. Uh, Gold soft farm PO box two twenty five, peach in Vermont 05862. And remember this is like the important part because I won't be able to get in touch with you. I won't be able to send it back. If you don't include the postage, you got to like self address stamped envelope and I will send you the free stickers. I hope you guys enjoy it. <clears throat> All right, what else we got here? Wow, yeah, wow, we're almost Okami. Good, good call, huh? That's that's crazy. It was like 
I think I had like 20 when I got on here. So that's awesome. You guys are the best. Just looked. Oh, oh, okay. See, I think it's Sealy. Um, is his is giving you guys a nice little spoiler. So next week, I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be about next week at some point. I've got a video coming out all about Toby going to the groomer. And it was crazy what happened and what he looked like and what the groomer said about my hygiene habits for Toby. Like you'll, you'll find out all of these things and see how he does when we take him to get groomed. He gets, uh, he gets the full works. Like, you know, he gets the brushing, he gets the washing, he gets blow the, like the blowout where they take the blow dryer and just like shoot off all the fur, which is crazy how much fur came off. Um, and so I did that and, uh, That'll be a video coming very soon. Hey, Foster Mom Gillette. Thank you for that super chat. Good luck and safe travels to the Homesteaders of America conference. Thank you. I really appreciate that support. Um, that's very kind of you. And uh, when I'm going to be at Homesteaders of America, I will be talking about geese. So, so you can actually see me give a talk about raising geese and what they can do for your farm and homestead. You can get a free button. Uh, we'll hang out, talk, shoot the breeze. It'll be a lot of fun. So come on down if you're in the area. Hey, Vixen Fatal, you ha I have a question if you could answer. Well, you got to ask the question. Um, Kev asked, will I ever do a meet and greet? So like I do, th I want to do more things and this is all, I guess, you know, COVID related or COVID determined, but I'd love to do more like, you know, conferences and come visit with people. I'm not sure if I'll ever do a meet and greet on the farm. I think I probably end up doing farm tours at some point. Um, so, so that's maybe in the future. Um, oh, I did say it right, Celia. Okay, cool. I always feel bad if I butcher someone's name that I, I see. How do you choose which animals become meat? That's a good question, Piper Lily. Um, so it, it depended on a lot of things. So for example, of our chickens, all the chicks that I hatched a couple weeks ago, all the roosters, they're all going to the freezers. They will all become meat. So it's, it, that one's driven by gender or sex. Um, when it comes to the geese and like which geese am I going to keep and which ones are going to go to the freezer, it's based on behavior, characteristics, like size, like a combination of things. Who's really thriving in the grass? Who's requiring more feed? My goal is to have big birds that like lots of grass and who are thriving. Um, you know, for example, I have like a couple smaller birds who like one of them has angel wing and she developed it based on diet alone. And so like she's one that's definitely going off to the freezer um, and so it's, it's really about who's got the best genetics that I want to carry forward for future birds. That's, that's really the biggest determinant. Oh, wait. Oh, Christina asked me a question. Thank you for the super chat. For some reason I can't even pop up here. Um, question that you can totally ignore because I feel the pain. How's the book coming? Oh, Christina, the pain is real. Um, it's, it's not yet. I I've been, this summer, I've been so busy with so many other things. I have not had a chance to do it. Um, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's been the case. And yes, Don brings up a great point that, yeah, you can actually stream it. So if you live far away, you can actually get a VIP membership to the Homesteaders of America. And all the presentations and stuff will be streamed. Um, so, uh, yeah. What's my favorite animal on the farm? Um I don't know. It's either Toby Dog or the Barn Cats, or I'll, I'll just say that they're a tie. Um, they are the ones that I'm closest with. They're the ones I have the most feelings for, um, even as I rub my face from petting Lil earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, th they would be my tops. Whoa, Zach Donahue. Heck yeah, man. Um, if you wouldn't mind... Um, that would be awesome. Shoot me a note. And uh, if you're, I don't know if, where you're located, but if you're not too far, we can try to figure out a way to exchange birds, but I would totally trade your tan silky rooster for Penny. That'd be exactly what I'm looking for. Like something like that would be a lot of fun. Vicky Rue, you absolutely can. Anybody can take a name. Don't, don't ever feel like you can't steal the names of one of my animals. I think it's kind of cool if you do. So, so I'm honored. Mary Swanson, thank you for that super chat. I really appreciate it. Um, that's very, very kind of you. And uh, yeah, if you send me an envelope, I will send you guys stickers. So uh, don't forget that. Um, any chance you're making dog treats? I love the making jerky, but Toby's snack would be a 
fantastic addition. That's a great idea. So, so Ivy Dragon Breath, by the way, great name. Um, yeah, so I like that idea. So, you know, one of the dilemmas I've actually had is when it comes to making beef jerky, you can't use the whole cow. Like it can only use about, I don't know, maybe about 100 pounds of the meat. And so I was going to just sort of use some of it as food for us here, sell some of it maybe locally as well. But uh, maybe I could take, actually take some of the fattier, sinewier cuts and dry them out and, and make them um, uh, dog treats. I love that idea. So I'm, I'm writing that one down, Ivy Dragon Breath. And if it ever comes to life, let me know and I will send some free dog treats to you. Ivy Dragon Breath. <laughs> I will remember that name. No, Corey Clark, the Parks and Recreation gang are not going into the freezer. There's also, I should have said this too, there are also a few animals that I just generally like. And yeah, for whatever reason, um, they end up not going. I am not going to the Kentucky State Fair. Um, so no, I, I, I won't be there. But I will see Waikiki Kitty down at HOA. So that's awesome, Waikiki Kitty. Thanks for coming out, Celia. <laughs> loved your work Yakushin. so cool <laughs> thank you i really appreciate that bonnie i have no intention of getting rid of bruce, bruce the goose uh you know so as long as he's healthy and any issues I, I don't plan on getting rid of him i i really like bruce he i like having the the genetic diversity of a buff mixing in with with the rest of my flock and um uh yeah that that would be the case jerry nfl's opening tomorrow you know, I'm a Pats fan, so I, I can't get behind that cold stuff. You know, Smoggy, I, I sometimes I try not. I find that like nobody actually wants to um, watch me open mail. I think that's the case. So sometimes I might do it as TikToks, and sometimes I might do it as a part of a bigger video. And so that that's typically what I do. Congratulations, Farm Brad, on selling that katahdin because he was growing a horn. Yeah. You don't want that. Um, Stealth Pilot Gaming asks, do you think your petition will get noticed by the government? Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I hope so. I hope it gets noticed by the governor. Um, so I guess that would count as being noticed by the government. So, yeah. Any plans on Toby's house? Um, no, other than, and I don't think I showed this in a video yet. I have finished it. So the front is there's like a there's a doggy door and a human door um and i've actually been training toby how to use the the doggy door uh so i think that's coming up in uh an upcoming video tree seedlings are rocking it joan so we have had so much rain this summer that they are you know usually i'm, I'm hoping for them to be about 18 inches they're all easily 24 inches so so they're doing great Quincy Cuthbert, thank you for that super chat. I want to farm two acres of fruit trees and a few inches and a few chickens. Do you think that's feasible as I would be doing it alone? Quincy, I think that that's very feasible. Um, I think, you know, the biggest thing would be if you're buying land that already has fruit trees, that it will save you a lot of time and energy. If you can't find that and, and you have to plant your own trees, don't, don't be discouraged. Just make sure that that's like the first thing you focus in on and, and what you do. And if it's only a couple acres and you don't want to have too many fruit trees, um, I think, you know, I would probably actually spend more money and buy more mature trees. If you plan on planting a lot of trees, I would spend less money and buy bare root trees. So it, it sort of depends on what's your target number of trees. Um, and then, yeah, a few chickens, 100 percent reasonable. So, yeah, no, I think what, what, you, what your dream sounds like is, is a very realistic one. And I, I wish you the best of luck. And, uh, yeah, I think that's awesome. I, I, let me know how it goes. I hope to hear about it. Can I refine genetics with Cayuga and Pekin to get great egg layer that still goes broody with them being a meat bird? Uh, that's an interesting question, Vixen Fatal. Um, hmm. <laughs> you know, what I have found is that genetics can be such a crapshoot. Um, you don't quite know. Um, you could experiment, though. I think if I were to try to do an experiment like what you're outlining, here's what I would do. I would figure out what you want as the male and what you want as the female. So do you want it to be a, a Pekin father and a Cayuga mother or a Cayuga uh, father and a Pekin mother? I think um, 
you know, if you want him to go broody, I guess he'd probably go with the Cayuga mother, maybe. But I don't know. Maybe the genetics work the other way. I don't, I don't know. So, so, so please don't take that as gospel. Um, but anyway, you raise that drake with the hens of the other species. So you're much more likely to have breeding activity if you have, like, say, five Cayuga females and one Pekin male, and you raise them all together. Um, if you try to like just introduce an adult peak and male to some Cayuga females, they might not mate and they might not take. So um, yeah, that's definitely the case. So I do have Toby dog merch, Kev. Um, so you actually see this design on the Toby dog stickers. Whoop, get rid of the glare. You can actually buy that on um, mugs like this one. Uh, I think I also have water bottles and uh, t-shirts and I think even sweatshirts. So uh, you can look for our merch. You can actually find the link down below. Um, uh, you can actually like just scroll right down. You'll see it. There's also, if you guys see this Toby dog portrait, we have, I think pillows and t-shirts with the Toby dog portrait on it. And uh, I got to admit my favorite t-shirt is the one that's the Toby dog as a general. Um, ever since I started watching you, my Facebook feed now gets chicken ads. I don't know. <laughs> you don't want any animals. <laughs> Sorry, Lisa. Yeah, I know. That's how I think that's just how the algorithm works. If you're watching uh, duck and chicken videos, you're going to get chicken feed ads. This is how they roll. All right. I live in Wales in the UK. You made me want flamingos, but after research ran the same issues regarding climate. Yeah, no, Corey, it's, it's such a good point. It's like, you might want an animal, but your context might be bad for that animal. And so you always have to really think about like, what's the setting you're in and, and is it the right context to the right setting? Um, uh, and, and does it make sense? Do tractor supply still use the old chicken brooder? They changed again. Also love it. So to the best of my knowledge, tractor supply is now using the, uh, the metal tubs with the heat lamps again. Um, I, I believe that that's what they're using. Actually, what happened, uh, I think over the last couple of months is they sold off all their brooders and actually, um, a friend of mine, she goes by, uh, the, the handle of hens and heifers. She's up in Maine and she actually bought one of them. And uh, I've been watching her actually brood a bunch of chickens with it. And, and, and my buddy Jack over at, um, mindful homestead is gonna laugh at this one. She's actually doing really well with them and it's working really well. I think the difference is she had to make some slight adjustments to make sure that everybody was happy and healthy inside those brooders. And I, I just, you know, as tractor supply rolled that out across the country, I just don't think they were doing enough with employee training and, and adjusting enough for the variability from store to store to make it work. And, and so, and again, I think it could work, but um, I, I just don't, uh, uh, I just don't, I don't know. I, I just it didn't work in this go around. So we'll see what they do next year. If you get if you get goats, I can p already picture you getting headbutted by them. Great clickbait if it happens. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should say thanks or not, Max, <laughs> but that's kind of a funny thought. So I will give you that. Um, but uh, you know, actually, I do want to address one thing you're saying. So clickbait. I, you know, I feel like I got a lot of grief from the video I put out last week talking about how I was leaving the farm, um, as if it was like clickbait and. I guess I struggle with that is because I feel like clickbait, right? Is when you say something and you completely mislead people and it's something completely different and you're, you're kind of lying in the headline and title of the video. But here I was putting out a video all about me leaving the farm and the title of the video was I had to leave the farm. And like, I don't know. That to me is not clickbait. So I don't know. Oh, Allison Hoffman, somehow I missed your super chat in the pinning stream here, but I can talk about it. Uh, so let me answer your question. Allison Hoffman, thank you for that super chat. Love your channel. It's very relatable. Uh, having two people work full time, but trying to start a farm. Keep up the great content. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you, Allison. I, I really appreciate that support. Thanks for saying that, Pleasant Places Farm. I, 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 I really genuinely try not to do clickbait on my part. And, and so, um, you know, I try to get titles that grab attention. I fully cop to that. I try to find something that's going to be catchy. I try to have a thumbnail that grabs people's eyes. Um, that's That to me is a big part of what, what it takes to be successful on YouTube. But I also try not to do clickbait. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, that's that's usually, you know, how it goes. So I, but I appreciate that support. 
Are you planning on adding more merch to this tour soon, like Ginny and Molly Barncat merch? <laughs> no, you said Ginny exactly right. Um, it, it's Ginny. Like I, that's that's usually how we write it, and um, you know I call her Jin Jin. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, you know what? I do want to do that. I'm working on some new merch designs right now. They should be ready later this fall and, and time for Christmas. And uh, so stay tuned. But yes, there will be Molly and Ginny merch. Um, perhaps even a. I'm not a cat person type of design. We'll see. We'll see how this comes. I'm in the process of designing right now. Ooh, Huckleberry Hens asks, how many chickens do we have? Let's see. How many chickens do we have right now? Um, well, we have 32 or 34. I forget. I think it's 34 um, uh, teenage chickens, the ones I hatched. We have 13 adult chickens. Carmen has her two kids. So that's 15 plus 34, that's uh, 48. Plus um, we have the four adult silkies, so that's 42, plus the three that hatched a couple of months ago, so that's 45. Plus, and I'm going to give this away, you guys won't see this probably for another week or so, we had three more silky chicks hatch. And uh, so that puts us at 48. So the answer, Huckleberry Hens, is we have 48 chickens right now. Have you ever thought about growing corn in our field? Yeah, I have. But, you know, actually, from an ecological perspective, I don't think it does good things. Um, you know, you're essentially, you know, stripping out a lot of the organic life to grow corn properly in this area. Um and uh yeah like i don't know i mean i guess i'd raise it for feed uh but i don't know it just it doesn't make sense especially given the equipment i have yeah i'll, I'll do that kev if i hit it uh, i feel like i'm a while away but i appreciate your optimism my friend how many hours of sleep do i get per night um you know usually somewhere between six and eight is like usually what i'm averaging these days which is i think good um, sometimes it gets a little crazier and I do less, but, uh, yeah. Oh, Jess L. That's a good one. I like that idea. That that's, that is an idea right there. I love it. Uh, love the creativity. Um, what was the date you came back to the farm? I'm trying to find the time a video happened to being uploaded. Oh, so, it, I mean, the answer is it, it really depends on a whole host of things. I'm usually a week or two behind between when the video gets shot and when it airs on YouTube. Um, that it just like, but it depends. So like, don't try to fixate on a single like date. Um, there's no magic to it. I do enjoy that click tier, <laughs> the clickbait that's secured by Bennett. Yeah, I love Ben's videos. I don't know if I've, I've talked about this before, but but Ben's a buddy of mine. I, I think he does some great content. He's one of the most original folks out there. Um, I enjoy his stuff so much, and it's a lot of fun. I really miss the day in the life of Toby. But any chance of a barn cat video? Yes. Uh, Christ uh, to my uh, – I'm sorry. That's I'm trying to – I'm struggling with the name. But – uh, my friend, I absolutely want to do a day in the life of, of Pablo Barncat, I think is what it's going to be. Um, and, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to make. I just need the time to do it. And I'm trying to set up like cameras and, and such to capture all of his activity. It usually takes somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, about five to 10 hours to edit each video. And, and the other thing is, and I'm talking about this in other things, so I don't feel like I'm giving away any secrets. Um, I actually have an editor I work with now. So, uh, my friend Valerie, she does this awesome job of doing a lot of the edits you see on videos these days. So just in, in the name of me being able to find extra time to do other stuff around the farm and, and kind of like actually get that six to eight hours of sleep each night. Um, I, I hired Valerie to actually work as an editor and she's been doing an awesome job. And, um, yeah, so, so like the way the process works is I shoot a video, I upload it to Valerie. She does an edit. She sends it back to me. I then take a look at it, maybe do some final tweaking and getting it like just so. And uh, that's what you end up seeing. And, and because of Valerie's help, that's actually how I've been able to go from doing usually just two videos a week to usually I'm doing three videos a week now. And, and so that's that's where it comes into play. I actually don't know exactly how many hours it takes her to edit. I think she's faster than I am. I go live once a month on the first Wednesday of each month. So 
8 p.m. Uh, on September. Well, what, what's, what's the October date? Hold on, let me tell you. My next live will be October 6th at 8 p.m., which will be, um, you know, actually probably be heading down or about to head down to Homesteaders of America. So that should be pretty exciting. Yeah, we almost have a thousand people here. This has been an awesome time hanging out tonight. Have you been to Al Lumna's new farm yet? Yeah, you know, Al and I have been talking about trying to do something soon. And so uh, stay tuned on that. <laughs> yeah, you know, Mary, I think you're right. <laughs> and the answer still remains the same. <laughs> you know, Lightning Luke, this is a good question right here. Um, you know, so I, I try to protect them as much as I can. I really don't, I've never had any frostbite issues with the ducks or geese um, or Toby or the barn cats. The only animal I've had frostbite issues with is actually on the roosters. Um, so, so because they have the long comb and long waddle, um, I've noticed I've gotten like a little bit of frostbite here and there, but it's usually not that bad. And they, they usually kind of roll through it. And, and so um, that's, that's really the only frostbite issue ever. Thank you, Robbie. I appreciate that super chat and I appreciate the support and those kind, kind words. What should you do if you have an aggressive male Pekin that only attacks one duck? Um, you know, John Cena, I would ask you, what's your ratio? Like how many males to females do you have in your flock? Um, because that might be what's at the root of your issue. And so maybe the solution might be, you might need like one or two extra um, females and it'll balance things out. Yes, 100%, Christina. Woot for Valerie. Everybody should woot for Valerie. Valerie does some great work. Uh, well, Rahul, um, there's no real magic to it. Uh, I really I wanted to do a set time where I always went live. Um, I find that weekday nights are the easiest time for me to go live. And so that's like, that's why it's like a Wednesday. And um, I just thought it was kind of easy for people to remember like, Hey, the first blank of the month is going to be this thing. Like, I feel like that's an easy thing to remember. And, and so that's how I ended up picking it. So uh, yeah. So guys, I actually have to run tonight. I promised Allison I would do something tonight with her. And uh, so I'm about to go do that. Um, and so I have to run, but a couple last words. Number one, um, if you guys want free stickers, just seriously, it's very easy. All you have to do is take a self-addressed stamped envelope, and drop it in the mail, mail it to me at Goldshaw Farm, P.O. Box 225, Peachum, Vermont, 05862. Um, and I will send you two stickers in return. And yeah, like you get them just like that. I'm just happy to give them to you because you guys have been hanging out with me tonight. And I just really appreciate all the people who watch our videos. Um, so that's number one. Number two, uh, tomorrow's video is going to be about sort of an update on the hound hunting situation and what happened with those folks who came on our property. Um, and so I'll give kind of a full rundown of that. But one of the things I'll be doing is introducing a petition. If you have a couple minutes, check it out. Go for it. Sign it. If you don't, again, I don't want this to be a hard sell. It's like really if it's something you believe and you want to support, go for it. I don't want to try to cajole folks into doing it. Um, and uh, so I'll leave a link to that down below. Thank you, as always, to my moderators, Jack at the Mindful Homestead, Rose at Wholesome Roots, Kathy, North Star Prep Setter, the Link Ninja. I love everything about you. Um, uh, Don over at Little Mountain Life. Thank you, guys. I always appreciate Carrie over at um, Built on a Rock Homestead. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you to all the super chatters. I love the support, too. The animals love it too. Cause usually I'm just taking the money from my super chats and buying food um, for the animals. And so uh, thank you everybody. And I hope you have a great night. I'll talk to you soon.